And now we're going to look at an actual case where PIM is being integrated in a company. We have a Salem user here today from Transa Backpacking, and they're already using the PIM system together with Dom. And now joining us on the stage is Michir Maya, the IT director at Transa Backpacking. So, thank you and welcome from my side. Um, I will show you some insights how we work to, uh, with PIM and, and DOM together. Um, first, few words to Transa. We are a retailer coming from the offline. Um, we are selling equipment for outdoor and traveling. And the numbers you see on the, on the slides about the products, that the products that we have in stock right now. So for uh, 11,000 products, and the pictures in the middle, the 100,000, are the total of assets um, we have in Salem um, assigning to, to, to the items we sell. Um, we have been working with Salem since 2010 and with uh, Novamind PIM since 2019. In the last um, few years, we went through different projects which had all an impact on, on data structure and data quality. I would say some, some words to the project in 2016 and 17, because this is the foundation that we could implement the PIM in 2018-19 within five months. So in the beginning, of 2016, we had the following situation. A lot of missing product data. Um, new products were entered in the ERP, but with bad quality. We had a lot of tools with manual importing all the data we get from, from our supplier. After these um, two years, 22,000 color and size code has been cleaned, restructured, um, we spent more than 4,000 hours to clean up all the text and um, picture, looking which picture are missing, text are mis uh, missing to the, to, the, to the products we sell. And we did also um, quite improvement in partially automated import from zero <laughs> to 40%, and now we are around 93 three percent of the of the product we can out, uh, import partly automated um, from our side benefits around PIM the distribu distribution of of data to the various channels like online shop and um, product cards magazines and so on it's really easy via via PIM and well prepared data connects the online and offline as a benefit for customer, salesperson in our stores, purchaser, but also for employees working in, in marketing. IPIM and iSupply was the number one driver for optimization around the data processes in our case. And through the optimization of, of data onboarding and easier import and export, to different system processes, we can save a lot of, of money and time. To collect, maintain, add, and distribute all the data from one place, so the PIM as a single source of truth, is, it's really helpful for us. And through standardization of, of the data, of the data model, we get really increase the data quality. Increased data quality provides improved experience, user experience. Um, increased data quality can also reduce return orders. For example, pictures on our online shop showing the wrong color. Or the color name on our side is different to the color name on the brand side. That's, that's all happened. <laughs> that's, that's still big problems today. And yeah, and 
having a PIM and the ERP, it helps also um, to make clear where have to be uh, where to 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 store the data, which is the master for what kind of data, and in the end to do the daily work, they are working lists and analytics that gives you really a helpful insight of your data. So that's our, our infrastructure. <laughs> um, the ERP, Data Hub in the middle, CELAM, PIM and JOB, that completely separated from each other. It means if ERP, PIM, CELAM, it's not working, we can still sell on our online shop. So first, we get the data from, from our supplier via Excel, <laughs> Web Services, EDI. But then we have to restructure that we can import the data in our PIM, in our structure. The second step is um, we did some transformation and, and mapping, attribute mapping, it's really typical thing. And after that, um, our purchaser can select the items and the items will export it to, to the ERP. Of course, not all the data, only the one we need to make an order by our supplier. Then from the data hub, the data will sync to Salem and up to the PIM. And the data hub, in, in our case, is just SQL database and some APIs on it. It's really <laughs> low high tech, but it works. And after assigning a, a, a product or an asset to, to a product in, in Salem, Salem expo export uh, the asset to PIM. And in PIM, the magic happens. Product, inf product information and the asset were linked together and we can use it for our online shop. How the assignment looks like, uh, we will see on the, on the next slide. So on the left side, you see the synchronized structure from PIM ERP to Salem. In our case, it's brand, product, color, and sizes. And after uploading as an asset to, to, to Salem, and assigning it to a node, um, some, some information field get passed through to the asset. Um, yeah, that's, that's happened when we assign a, a picture, picture to, to a node. After that, after the export, um, in, in PIM, the, the asset and the, and the product information were linked together and generating uh, a link like, like, uh, like you can see on the, on the screen. For this, I go just a little bit back. To link the product and the asset together, PIM makes a request on, on our data hub, gets the information back which, inform, which product has to be merged with the asset ID coming from the, S, uh, from the Salem side. So that's the, that's the whole loop. And if we have all the necessary data together, PIM will sync to, to the shop. And the necessary information is just the really important master data for the product, attributes, text, and pictures. So we have some improvement planned um, because um, Salem offers the partner the possibility to build some extensions. We use these extensions and together with Bricks we already developed some, some of the extensions. Um, the extension you can find on, on the Salem marketplace or on, on the Bricks extens extension store. I would like to say some, some words of the two latest, the Novamind Connect and the Assignment Handler. The Salem Novamind Connect synchronized the product directly between PIM and Salem. So we don't need the data hub we have seen in the slide before. And 
with this synchronization and getting some attributes into Selam, we have the possibility to search after these attributes inside of Selam. So that makes, in, in our side, the process really smaller and, and one interface less, less, which can make some problems. Then the second one we just start using is the assignment handler. As a retailer, we get products from different suppliers. If you can remember, we have over 500 suppliers. Um, uh, 500 brands and 300 suppliers. Some of them sending assets with named like product ID, product description. Other ones sending product name and color codes and makes really hard to us to automate this process. So in the, in the, in the past, we had to assign every picture by hand manually takes a lot of time. So what we build is like an assignment connector, uh, assignment handler. So we can create like a node in Salem, putting all the, all the data from, from the brand in this, in this, um, in this uh, folder. And then we can set up some rules how the assignment handler extracts the data from the name of the asset and use this to assign it to our structure. And here you can see we have the item number and the color code. And if, 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 uh, with two, these um, two information, we can automate this assignment process. And yeah, all the, all the extension, it's, it, as, a, as a customer, it's really great. It helps us to, to optimize some processes and the extension, they can build quite, quite fast. I guess for a, for a partner, it's, it's a good thing because they can sell the, the extension to other, other customers. And from our side, you don't have to care about updates. So if Salem releasing a new version, that's not our problem. That's the problem of the partner. They have to make sure that, that it works with the new version. Hopefully, the extension is a li little bit cheaper and we can share. But one, one of the big uh, benefits is, yeah, some other customer has new ideas. They help to develop this extension further on, and we can use this as well. So we work the same, same wise um, also in, with, with uh, our ERP partner together. So from, from our side, it's really a good concept to bring it forward. So less customization <laughs> um, helps and make, it, make the updates easier. Um, some learnings from our side. We are far away from perfect. We need a lot of more time to, to be really um, prepared online. And in our case, it's always a question how many resources we, we can afford to push this um, topic forward. And the preparation for the data onboarding is one of the biggest things. So we have to reduce the time there. It's really that's 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 the big thing. And what we need is like standard industry state model for easier data exchange. As I said, five three hundred suppliers, three hundred different Excels, structures, informations. Well, that's, that's, that's really a big, big problem. And for that, we have to collaborate closer together with, with brand and supplier. It's not anymore a retailer and there is the, is the brand and the supplier. We have to work together because both of them have the same problem. And in the past, we were really, oh, okay, brands building up their own store. But in the end, it help, helps us because they, they have to clear the data. And now they can send us the data as well. So it's, I think, yeah, together we, we can go for it. And some trends, yeah, text pot, it's really a big thing. Um, every year, twice a year, we get around 1,500 new products. And for every product, we text. 
by our own. So that could be help just to categorize some, some of the products and cheaper ones or yeah, less important, just do it with TextBot or get the, get the text from, from our supplier. AI ML for, for the categorization, automatic mapping as well, getting out some attributes from text that, that will help definitely. Some content objects. Um, for example, Gore text like technology or sustainability labels. If we can build up like content objects in PIM, we can link it to, to categories or, or, or to some, some uh, products. That would be nice as well. And yeah, more APIs. Less Excel, FTP, what else to, to send, <laughs> send information around. Yeah, learnings for us, the package IPIM, iShop and Salem, no mind connector results in less interfaces to worry about. Um, experienced people around data are really often missing in the companies or in-house, but that's the people you need to, to bring, the, bring the topic forward. In our case was moving away from the question who is or which department is responsible for, for data towards the question who is interested to work with the data and sees the potential of the data. But then it takes a lot of time to, to bring the people to a point that they understand the real potential of, of data. Data is not only internal use not only to order, and that's that where it comes from. Our, our purchaser, they use just the data to, to order. But as we, as we heard before, we need the data as well for, for, the, for the customer. And yeah, in the study there was two points which, uh, which I would like to mention. 20% um, of the customer leave the shop. If the, if the data is, is bad. And 50% of, of customers, they go to different shops because they're missing some information. Well, some information on this has been written on the other side, so 50% use more than one store to buy a product because of missing data. And in the end, yeah, standard functionality in PIM with a flexible data model inside the PIM, which we can use for us um, and reach it and, and yeah, can use the data how we would like. That's, that's some learnings and which, which help us in, in, in the PIM dumb experience. Yeah, that was just a really short insight um, how we work. Um, so if there is any question, please go ahead. Yes? Did you, did you implement uh, both feature for PIM at the time at the same time? No. One moment. We're going to use the microphone so okay. that our online users... My, my question is, um, did you implement uh, both systems at the same time, or were the, did you start with the DAM system and then implement the PIM system? Yeah. And what was the effort to, to synchronize these both? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we start, we, we, we use Salem for, for many years, and we start uh, in 2019 with PIM. And the big thing was not synchronizing Salem with PIM. Big thing was synchronizing ERP with the PIM, which data should be synchronized, and 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 the data structure and and yeah, that that was the po uh, the, the project we did in 2016, because with, without this project, cleaning up all the data from our side, it's not really nice to start a, a PIM project, because you have to do this anyway. So we did this before, and then we can implement it really, really quick. We have another question here. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, my, my question is uh, regarding the 300 different suppliers or 300 different uh, uh, metadata structures and Excel file sheets, etc. I'm coming from the picture agent, uh, industry and there we also, we have standards, but nobody knows them or takes care of them or whatever. In the, you know, the market of pictures is very small, but the market of products in general is very big. So why don't they work on, on, a, on a structure, on a standard, in order to make your life <laughs> struggling, their life struggling, and why don't they care? Do you, do you have an idea? No, it's, it's a really good question, but, but it's, it's really it starts going on, and, and we try from our side to, to communicate with our suppliers, bring the suppliers together to set up like, like a standard model data model or creating like a platform and sometimes you have different platforms but then you have a platform here with 50 of your suppliers then there is another one with 20 and then so it makes it not really easier and some of, of our suppliers they are really small they can afford like like a, a, a big platform so for them it's 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 a challenge to s sending us every year the same structure in the Excel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. maybe, maybe it's time to contact the ISO organization and say, hey, let's make a standard for this I type of information. I think there is a rethinking going on right now. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, there is a lot of other industry where they have like a standard. And we are hopeful to get this as well in, in our in our industry. Question. Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I, I want to relate to your um, a statement. You, you said you separated the information within your ERP system and your PIM system. Yes. Can you tell me on where did you draw the line and which information did you put on which system? <laughs> so what, what we have inside the ERP is just the data we need to order, to do all the processes we need to sell the product. Um, and all the attributes, text, and so on, the, the more content um, to the product, is, it's all stored in the PIM. That's, that's the line we try to, to set. Yeah, great question. We have another question here, or online. Not at the moment, but... We have still time for questions. <laughs> yeah, we do. Here is a question in the back from this gentleman. Thank you. Um, in the absence of a unified standard or format for, for importing this data, you use this uh, special connector that you developed with Bricks to import the data. So I just wanted to get a better picture or idea. How did you go about integrating that data? Is it by through the means of uh, tagging or s certain struct, um, attributes in the data that you could map the data? H how, how did you go about doing it? First, the NoMind Connect connects only PIM with Salom. So the, the data is already structured and, and cleaned in the PIM. So it, that's, that's not, not an import. It's just the synchronization between PIM and, and CELOM. What we use to, to import the data is, is um, from NovaMind iSupply, and it helps us to, to do the mapping. So we get an Excel, we can set up like a mapping inside the iSupply, and um, link it to, to, a, to a supplier. So if this supplier sent the same Excel file Half a year later, we can use the same mappings and import it more quickly. But in the beginning, to set up this, um, this mapping, sometimes you have to, have to spend half a day, a day just to, to do the mapping, see how what, what the supplier delivers um, kind of data and how we would like to map that they fit in, in our system. So that, that's, that's we work. Mm. We have another question. Hi there. Um, it's amazing to see the before and after journey. Um, just interests me, there are a lot of other dam solutions on the market. So why, why Salem? 
in the first place and why did you stay with Salem over the years? Thank you. <laughs> A brave guy. For me, why Salem? It's easy to answer. I was not there when <laughs> they decided <laughs> for, for Salem. So, <laughs> so, and why still Salem? Yeah, we, we are in a, in a bigger, how to say, in a, in a, in a bigger constellation. So we, we're working on the same Salem like Scott, because um, we have some, some so the, 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 the main shareholder of Scott is now our, our main shareholder. So we, we try to use similar system, try to use the, the information or, or the, the knowledge from brand side to retail to the retailer side to improve the process. So that's the way we, 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 we work together with, with Salem. Yeah. And for us, with, with, all, the, with all the connection, it, it works. So there is, there is no, no need to change. So. And how many people are in your team? We are um, around 10, 10 people, yeah. And we are responsible for, for, yeah, for the IT operation, for application, data management. Then we have some, some data analytics, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, it's still small, um, makes it more easier, but still, yeah, always a question of what, what I mentioned, how, how many resources we can put in. We have to earn the money before we can invest it to, to people and bring, the, bring the, the topic forward. So that's always a little bit a gap. And what happened right now, it's like an offline, we are going online. We have to learn a, a lot about being online. And on the other hand, a lot of online goes o offline because yeah, the, the selling process on a, on a, in, in a store is different than a, than a, than a selling process on online. And our products, yeah, they, they are emotional and it, it, this needs this this, this connection, this, this magic between people. And we have a lot of people that have a lot of experience traveling around and that, that's the point why people come to us. They would like to hear some stories and how they use the products. And that's the big challenge, bringing this online. That's what Michael said in, in the beginning. Well, we have one last question here from our audience. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you mentioned that you're uh, offering the good data to to uh, new people, other people in the enterprise. Any any surprises? Uh, anyone who's stuck out from asking or being interested? New people interested in the in the data, the product data? You mentioned Pro that on one of your last slides that you're opening up this. No, we data. are not offering the data to to other 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 um, companies. Um, but we offering the data inside the company. That's as well a big, big step. And any surprises? Did you find someone none you didn't expect? Or yeah, one, one, one good thing is that, that our people in the store, in the offline store, they use the online job more and more to, as a tool for selling, to see information about the products and that that's, I think it's a good sign. If they use our online job to sell, then you know you're on a, on a good way. But still, there is a long, long way to go. But they're digitizing, so that's good, yeah. All right. Well, this was a great story. We have, um, all right, one more question over here, third row. Then we're going to be moving on. But I'm sure it's an excellent question. Just a short one. Um, how do you use the uh, print assets? Do you um, get the print assets out of Silom, or is print at least um, important for you? Yeah, it's getting less important every year. So we we did in the past uh, like a big handbook, like a bible of of <laughs> of outdoor equipment, but we stopped um, I think two years ago. And what we do is, yeah, just bringing together some, some information from Salom to PIM with, with, um, with some 
Adobe tools in the marketing, but there is not really a big, big process behind to do this. It's just manually. And yeah, for the end, if you like to see more about uh, the synchronization between um, PIM and Salem, I think tomorrow more uh, in the afternoon, one o'clock, there is, is a master master class that shows a little bit more about how it works. Awesome. And hopefully at the coffee break, we can find out more and yes. meet you. So Thank you.